All right, everybody, welcome back to our Slayer album review series. You know, and of course, we'll eventually rank them and everything. Last time we took a peek at probably Slayer's most known album of all time and possibly their heaviest one, uh, Rain and Blood. This time we're sticking in, in the 80s here, uh, 1988. This is the last album uh, of theirs from the 80s. We'll be entering the 90s next um, with Seasons in the Abyss. But, you know, a uh, transitional album in between those, because there are some stylistic differences between uh, Rain and Blood and Seasons in the Abyss. Of, like, those two albums are, you know, they have, I mean, it's still Slayer, but there are quite a few different elements going on. And this right here... South of Heaven is the perfect uh, transitional album uh, for that. And just really, really, again, show off the absolutely insane album art. And what's cool is, uh, yeah, I got the uh, that stamp on there and, the you know, the warning. Uh, but also, this is in, like, another casing besides the record sleeve I put it in. So, like, and then I can pull the record out of there. So, like, if I'm listening to it, you know, I'm not going to have that sticker, you know, uh, obstructing the artwork and everything. But, um... Yeah, just uh, really, really. I just got I just got this copy in um, a couple days ago, and just in great shape and everything. And um, but with you know, with that being said, uh, we might as well go ahead and hop on into this review here. Uh, which again, like I said before, same lineup here with all the guys on the back: Dave Lombardo, you know, uh, Kerry King, Jeff Hanneman, Tom Araya, all the guys back here. Uh, we're not going to see a change in that until a couple albums. Uh, I think we're going to have one, this one, and then, you know, of course, Seasons in the Abyss. After that, we'll get actually uh, get us a lineup change, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or the one after that. It'd be one of those. Um, but, or no, yeah, that would be after Seasons of the Abyss. My bad. But um, anyways, yeah. So, when talking about the stylistic changes, um, this kind of shows where, you know, Slayer coming off Rain of Blood, it's like, okay, where do you go? How do you get faster? Well... There are some really fast ones on here, don't get me wrong, but they did get a little bit more of like a groove uh, to their tracks and more more melody kind of thrown in some of these here. Um, and that, that definitely stand out. Like there's enough on here uh, as far as these melodies go and, you know, even hooks uh, for these guys that stand out. Like on this album that I can see stand out more to like people who wouldn't be as into stuff like Rain and Blood and Hello Bates and... Some of that stuff. I mean, it, you know, even Show No Mercy had quite a bit of, like, hooky choruses and everything. Hello 8s and, you know, that stuff. That very, very fast, heavy stuff. Um, you know, less, like, melody going on as far as, like, the, uh, you know, like a, a, a chorus and such. This is more, you know, it's less about the speed and more about those melodies and, like, the groove that the song has to it. Um, but... Again, there's still a lot of, like, there's a couple tracks in here you can rip right off Rain and Blood. But Seasons of the Abyss, kind of the same way, kind of follows the same um, kind of trend this will, except maybe even to a greater extent. But anyways, yeah, let's just kick it right off here. Side one, track one, the title track, South of Heaven. You talk about melody and hook. That riff is one of the most evil, diabolical sounding riffs i've ever heard man i mean it's one of their most iconic tracks again um off here this you know following rain and blood they had to you know whip out a, just an incredible uh track that you know it with a riff just like the song raining blood that was a massive hit for them south of heaven the title track here is a was a pretty solid hit for these guys here and just an incredible song um you know it just evil sounding that may be one of the most evil sounding riffs i've ever heard in my life just it's wicked really really heavy stuff but this does kind of establish the more of a groove thing going on with it but it it definitely not to the extent as some of these other tracks we'll go into uh do but south of heaven just an incredible song an incredible way to open up this thing and then it bleeds right into silent scream this one the fast stuff starts kicking right in because man and Dave Lombardo, we've talked about him a ton before already. I think this just might be his best drum work on here. I mean, it's so clear. The production, this is their best production up to this point. Um, it's really just gotten better and better as these albums have gone along, naturally. Um, it, but this one, I, I tell you, it just is on another level production-wise. You can Dave's drumming is all over the place, just going crazy. It's like, he's just, in, in the way he's, 
it must be the way he tuned his drums on this one as well as factoring in the production and just how he's gotten better over the years. Um, but like you hear that right off the bat on South of Heaven, but on a faster track like Silent Scream, I mean, my God, this one, oh, just an incredible, incredible track that kind of has like a, it almost kind of has a Rain and Blood-esque riff to it, um, except a little bit faster. Not, not, obviously not the same riff as or anything, but it's kind of got that same kind of way where it kind of, you know, does the scale thing and um, just, just set up really, really fast. So if you get a really, really fast one right off the bat, it's like, hey, here's a kind of a groovier track with South of Heaven, Silent Scream. We're still really freaking fast. So, and just a, a big, big, great track on there. Then we go with um, Live Undead which was actually the name of one of their live albums that, you know, that they would end up putting out, which is a really cool name for a live album. But the damn track right here is a huge standout. Another really, really fast heavy hitter. There's a drum solo in here that's just absolutely mind-blowing. Those are scattered all over the damn place on this album. But um, the one on Live Undead is just... And Live Undead is one of those tracks that, like, at one point you think it might be over because it kind of does, like, the main groove to it and kind of you think it's going to finish. Bam! Kicks right back into it and it just keeps going. One of my favorites off here for sure. And if I didn't say it about South of Heaven, that is one of the big highlights off here as well. But Live Undead, I mean, man, if you're wanting to rip out some of those really, really speedy ones um, on here, that's one of them that you could definitely, I could hear being on Rain of, Blo uh, Rain of Blood for sure. Then we go with, this might just be my favorite off here. Um, I'm talking Behind the Crooked Cross. This is where these melodies and hooks, like, there's almost more of a singing kind of vibe from uh, Tom Araya going on here. Um, it, and just really, but but it's, yet again, it's really, really fast, though, at the same time. Like a faster sang song, but it's not more of like, almost like I've described, you know, on some of the other stuff where he's almost like speaking in tongue, it sounds like. You know, he's singing along through this melody and stuff, and then we get to this chorus... And just that kind of builds up and builds up and then just behind the crooked cross and then the speeds back up again. Love, love, love the riff behind the crooked cross just might be my freaking favorite off here. Um, incredible, incredible track. The drumming is again, that some of the time signatures and just like the drum fills that Lombardo's bringing to the table here are just out of this world. Insane. Let me close off side one with uh, mandatory suicide. Another one of my favorites kind of steering away from the, uh, you know, the, the satanic stuff a little bit and talking about like war and how you're going out there and pretty much it, it, when you're going out to a battle on the battlefield, you know, it's like, this is, you have to do this as you're a soldier. So mandatory suicide, you know, but just really, really cool uh, lyrics to it. And, uh, you know, an interesting take on that sort of thing. And, and another one of the big highlights off this album to me, love it. Then we go with us uh, on side two, ghosts of war. My God, another fast one so you see we there are plenty of really really fast heavy as hell tracks that is another one of those ones that uh i would say you can just flop off uh pop off of um uh hell awaits or rain and blood that would fit right in on there and you wouldn't you wouldn't notice a damn thing um get, again kind of follows the same lyrical themes as mandatory suicide so it's really cool hearing that thing and then flipping the record over and then you kind of hear the same you know, theme going on. Uh, so Ghosts of War, an incredible way to open that next side. Then we go with Read Between the Lies, another one of my favorites, the lyrics. It kind of goes back to, like, um, some of the stuff, you know, they, that they talked about on Rain and Blood and some of the prior albums, and even a little bit on this one already, um, about kind of the corruption and some of, like, the Catholic churches and, and, and just some things like that, um, if you look into, and just some of that kind of the evil that can go on. It just a really, really cool uh, and, and, uh, take with some really, really cool and unique lyrics, uh, kind of some abstract lyrics. And uh, I, I, I just like the whole kind of concept of that song. And it's, on top of that, another one of those freaking really, really fast ones that's just super badass. Then we go with uh, Cleanse the Soul, which might be my least favorite off here. But as we've seen with these past couple, that doesn't mean it's a bad song because it's a freaking great song. Cleanse the Soul is a freaking blast to the face. Um, with an incredible drum solo in it, incredible fills, really, really cool riff, and you, you're getting some screeching. Again, That that's all over here, that screeching, like, sounds like freaking cries out from hell, sounding shredding going on from uh, King and uh, Hanneman going on here. And there were, I forgot to mention, too, like on uh, Ghosts of War, you, you get you one of them Tom Araya, just like howling screams that just is out of this world. Sounds like someone's crying out, you know, burning down there in hell. 
So and I, and I love those moments on the on the albums on Slayer albums when he does that because he's so just so damn good at it. Um, but yeah, uh, read between uh, Clint Clint's a soul. Back to that. Probably my least favorite off here, and probably the least memorable to me off here. But it is a really damn good song. Then we go with something really cool here. They actually did a cover of Dissident Aggressor, of course, by Judas Priest off their album Stained Class, which we reviewed on here before. Actually, before um, I ever heard Stained Class, um, which I I've listened to Judas Priest a lot longer than I have Slayer, but I just happened to have heard South of Heaven, uh, this this album before Stained Class uh, years ago. And so, uh, you know, I just was like, damn, this is a really good Slayer song. Then when I first ever heard, uh, you know, Stained Class, I was like, holy shit. Like, so this is a Priest song. And man, do they knock it out of the park. That's how you do a cover. They really, really make it their own. And it just, it, it, and it doesn't feel out of place in the album to kind of, you know, talk about Judas Priest. Like, you know, Johnny Be Good off of their Ram It Down album. Kind of out of place on that record. Uh, you know, this is a cover that does is not out of place at all. You wouldn't even if you didn't know Judas Priest did it, and like in my case, um, years ago, you know, you you would just be like, damn, that's a really good Slayer song. I like, and you know, if you want to hear me talk about the Judas Priest version, which I freaking love, you can watch that review. I did that like several months back when I was going through their discography. Um, one of my favorite Priest songs, and guess what? It's one of the it's a big highlight off here for sure. Uh, I wouldn't say like the best off here or anything because I mean their original stuff off here is where it's at you know as far as like artists doing their own original thing but it does have its place in this album they absolutely nail the chorus and I love the tone um King and Hanneman get like you know in between like during the chorus like in between each little vocal part just that squeal that goes on that it, they totally slayerized uh this, this is an aggressor, which is just a badass track. Well, probably one of my favorite covers uh, any artist have ever done of anybody. Um, so, just incredible job at that. Then we wrap it up with a dark and eerie um, track, Spill the Blood, that opens with like the kind of acoustic, um, clean tone guitar, and then with the big chug that's going on, which is a lot of that chugging stuff going on around here, and a lot of headbanging moments. And then you get, this is probably the one that's the most... Uh, kind of melodic and slow and uh, dreary, but it's not like a, again, it's not like a slow song or whatever, but just compared to, sl for Slayer, it's a slower one, but like it works because, you know, you get like the, uh, it's kind of a droning track, you know, talk, uh, and, and just like whatever, it's like, you spill the blood and you come onto me, just a little bit slower and a, a really, really hooky melody and chorus during those verses and everything, but then in between, each verse, you get a little, like, a little guitar fill of, like, a, like, just really, really fast, cool fill, and then you get, you know, Tom Array, that, and the heaviness is still here, because he's shouting, you spill the blood, you know, uh, at, you know, really freaking loud at the top of his lungs on, uh, during the chorus and everything, and that's always been one of my favorite Slayer songs, um, Spill the Blood is just an absolute beauty, evil beauty, to close this, uh, record out, and it kind of, again, is the precursor to what we'll look at next time in uh, Seasons in the Abyss, with kind of, uh, that one having a lot more of those more melodic, um, kind of hookier tracks, but yet really heavy, it doesn't take away the heaviness at all, which the perfect example of like, oh, wouldn't you think that that's what it would do? No, not at all. Listen to Spill the Blood, and you will see. <laughs> Just like the song says, I'll show you sights that you will not believe, you know, Here's a song that you will not believe. The heaviness is still there. If you if you had any doubt, no matter what speed Slayer are going at, they're still Slayer. So I get where this could be kind of a controversial album, having some of those elements. And same with the next album on Seasons in the Abyss, where that could kind of be a controversy uh, amongst fans. But hey, I freaking love South of Heaven. An incredible album. Um, you know, it's one of those albums, the more you listen to it, the more you dive in, which I find this with a lot of Slayer albums. You just love them more and more over the years. Uh, you know, there's just so much to them, you know, and they're so atmospheric with this art on them and everything. And this, they really capture, um, they, they really put out an environment, you know, and, and again, you know, to use the same word, atmosphere in their albums that is just, man, it's something else. But yeah, guys, um, South of Heaven, an incredible, incredible record. This is the last one of the 80s for Slayer that we're going to be looking at. We're entering the 90s with Seasons in the Abyss. Let's talk about this thing down in the comments. Do you like kind of the direction that we're going at this time with 
some of these more melodic tracks um, kind of on here, like with South of Heaven and, you know, uh, what Behind the Crooked Cross during the verses, it's kind of melodic and everything. Spill the Blood, kind of a slower, dronier one. Do you guys like that sort of, them doing that sort of thing? Um, if you do, do you prefer it, you know, uh, to their faster stuff, or do you just kind of love anything they do? Um, so, you know, that'd be an interesting topic, especially when we get to seasons. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. But we're talking about this one today. So let's talk about this down here in the comments. And I'd love to hear your guys' favorite thoughts, uh, favorite tracks off here, least favorites, likes, loves, dislikes, hates. And and also, I'd love to talk about, like, what you guys think about that cover on there, uh, the uh, their cover of the Priest track, Dissident Aggressor, because I freaking love it. But yeah, guys, uh, like, subscribe, comment, and stay tuned for next time when we look at Seasons in the Abyss. Thanks.